Hi everyone, welcome back to the Dance and Art Studio. We're going to continue some of our smaller casual composition studies where we practice some of the techniques and some different colors. And uh, I like to paint these pretty quickly. I use these smaller boards. Now, here I have a board, again, medium white. Uh, nice starting color. I use a lot of medium white, sometimes medium gray. They're good uh, neutral starting colors and then I manipulate the background from there. But this is a board that I've cut to uh, fit this frame here. Actually, the frame when I bought it came with a board, so let's step back just a bit so you can see that. And the frame I had came with a board, but it also came with this mat board here. So it'll be, I'll be actually adding a mat board to this particular painting here before I frame it up. So I'll have to keep, since this is going to be for that frame, I'll have to keep that contrast of that frame to the contrast of the main, to, of the frame to the mat in mind as I start to develop this. So I've just marked off, um, you know, with a, with a pencil line here first real lightly where those corners of that mat board are, and then I just taped off. So this gives me an idea because, you know, so I don't encroach or lose or cut off any of my painting when I go to mat it. Let's get going. So I'm going to take my uh, three quarter inch brush. I'm going to be using the Heritage Multimedia, the Painted Simply Colors, like I always do. And I get quite a few questions from people that say, oh, do you paint in oils? Can you do it with acrylics? No, I don't use oils. I haven't used oils for 30 years. I don't like them. Uh, oils cannot do these techniques. I don't use bottled acrylics or thin acrylics, flow acrylics. Those don't also work. I use my colors very, very thick. And as you see here in this container, I like my colors really thick. They're actually just a little thicker than some tube oils and stuff. And so I mix up my heritage. The heritage comes to you a little bit thinner like that. And there's a special way in which we call globalizing the color. And we, we thicken them up like that. And then I that's how I like to paint with them. Let's get going. So I have this nice warm kind of background here. I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to cool some of the background here. Let's take some of our ultramarine blue and let's take a little black and white to make a, a nice cooler gray color. That'll play against my warm color. So I'll make this nice cooler kind of gray color here. Sometimes I add a little uh, uh, of a color like a quinacridone or uh, here I'll, I'll use a little quinacridone but sometimes a red violet and that takes it a little more purpley type color which is even a little bit more cool but uh, I'm going to lighten this up a bit and I'm just going to push this through the painting here and I'm going to paint a very uh, impressionistic my 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 thoughts here are a very impressionistic uh, casual uh, painting here and uh, which are very very popular I sell a lot of these paintings uh, today and uh, they just have a great look because they go everywhere in any kind of house or any kind of home now all I'll do is I've so I put that on I'm going to leave some of that warm area some of my cool area so I have a nice play against the color sometimes you can wipe back like this let a little bit of that warm color kind of peek through in one area up there and gives you a better color uh, traveling of color going through there let's take a little burnt sienna let's play our colors here a little bit so burnt sienna is a nice warm kind of a, 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 a toned orange color and let's just play that right through the the painting here for just a minute and we'll create some some movement and stuff through that just very very light pressure just move that color through sometimes I push it like this to create some different element. This is a, a nice, um, uh, very casual painting, and it's just, what I'm looking for is just movement. That burnt sienna is nice, and that burnt sienna cools down and darkens very well with a little bit of my ultramarine blue, which I'll push some of that in. Now, some of this will disappear. Some of this will stick. Some of this may stay around, and I just lightly kind of go through, and I'm just looking for some movement some sticks some movements and stuff this is very contemporary in this look matter of fact we might let some of that that blue just come out here a little bit more here just a little bit more blue even a little bit of that light color there just to see some of that tone come out and that just looks great into your background here so we'll add some of that Greens. I always think about, even when you're painting impressionistically, I always think about some greens. And let's get a nice, let's take some pine green, a little bit of uh, yellow oxide here, or a little Hansa yellow, whatever you have there. Nice, thick, thick color here. Okay, and just a nice, nice green that I'll put in. And this will give me some of the feeling of some leaves and some leaf movements here. Sometimes I'll pick up a little more of that pine green so the green is a little different. You could add blues to this. Some of the blues, which will darken that and make it more of a blue-green. 
we can carry it heavier down to one side here like this and make more of a, a, a darker side and a lighter side. But I'm just going to push up and, and carry some of this movement here, this color through that background. And that's what I like to do. Sometimes I'll drag my, my hand through like this, which softens the effects and blurs the effects and gives you another type of look. It's a beautiful contemporary type of look to your painting. Now I'll come in and let's just decide on some flowers here. Okay, so maybe I'll take some of my yellow. I'll start with, and, and I do all different kinds of flowers. We'll do little daisies or so here, little blossoms here. Okay, so let's come right into here. So I here I have a lot of yellow. I don't have any over here, so maybe I'll put a yellow one right in here. That'll just take my yellow back up to this side here. So, and I'll just push in and out, and I'll start to lay on some of that thick color in there. Sometimes I, I, I I'll go through a couple of times like this and just model through and take off some of that and then restate some thicker color back in there again. And just very light pressure with really thick color like this. And that, that puts that on, and, and it's that thick color that's modeling in and out of there and giving me all of that beautiful interest that's in there. Now let's go in and, and let's just say I'm going to make a, a white blossom or so. Let's take our, how do you make white? White's any kind of gray. Let's take some of our, our blue, our ultimate blue and our burnt sienna here. Mix that together, a little bit of our yellow, a little green, even a little bit of our quinacridone violet. I get this beautiful kind of gray color. All of your colors together. You you know, you're an artist, you're working for harmony and so a lot of your Putting all of your colors together and into some of these flowers is a great thing to do. This color goes with everything because it contains everything. But I leave it kind of on the gray side here. So let's just come in and, and push some of this gray in that will neutralize. Just I don't want to neutralize all, but it neutralizes some of the tones around there. We can even take some of this gray and toss it into the center of this little yellow one that we'll be painting here. And then uh, let's paint a few others, like maybe there'll be a little blossom of one coming down this way here, and maybe there'll be another one. Let's take a little more blue into that. Change it up just a bit. Maybe there'll be another one coming down over here off of this side. So we'll have a couple of them and a couple of them kind of trailing off, and we should probably put a little yellow trail off of here as well, some yellow ones kind of trailing. Now, let's give all of this in here. Let's take some burnt sienna and maybe a bit of that blue and stuff into that and uh, to darken that down just a bit here. I like that. Uh, even a tiny, tiny touch of black. Tiny. Because you don't want to get this too dark. And we'll uh, just put in some stem lines, stem movements here. The idea of some stems. Sometimes I use green. Sometimes I use the browns like this. Just to chisel the brush. Let's just add some of that movement. And we'll, we'll add some other little movements of that through here. Just And I just use the corner. This is my little number eight fusion flat, which really does the work for me because it's such a soft, beautiful little brush. And I just use the corners of it like this to create some of that contrast. Now, one of the things that I'm thinking about when I'm creating and moving and using this also is this frame. So I got to see, okay, is that frame color and everything there going to work pretty nice with that frame? And it does. So we'll continue on, okay? So I have some of that color there. Now, sometimes I'll just take that edge and soften that edge off or so. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get too much interest here to the outside. So I'll let some of that interest just die out like that. Just take your hand and drag over it. And because the paint that I'm using is so thick, it softens really nice, really easy. Okay, let's come in and uh, we'll start to build some light flowers. First, I'm just going to push a little area here that, so I stay underneath the camera and we'll take some of our yellow, some of our white. See how thick that white is. See how thick that is. Okay, you need to use colors that are this that you make this thick. This is the heritage, and I've I've made it this thick. I've let it come out that thick. This is my white. This is my white in this little container. And we have all kinds of videos that I show how to do all this. But this is how thick my white is. And this is the key to painting this type of technique: is these thick, slower drying acrylic paints. And so these are all still wet, and they're very, very thick. And I use hundreds of different techniques when I paint them.
but this is the key to it. So let's come in here first with just a real, with white, with a little bit of our yellow oxide into that. And we'll just come in here and we're just going to come over and just lightly touch and lift off to set the, the uh, beginnings of these petals here of what will be the, the uh, main daisy here onto this side. And sometimes I will pull out like this here and I'll do some shorter ones over here as well. That'll set my main daisy flower there. And so you notice I loaded my brush quite a bit and uh, laid off really, really thick paint. Let's come over here and, and add some yellow to this. Maybe even a little Hansa yellow. Nice thick Hansa yellow here to really brighten this up. Let's pick up some of this color and let's get that a little brighter. Let's get a little daring today, a little brighter. Nice thick color. Let's come in and let's set that down here vary the, the type of petals, the edge, the width of them. Sometimes turn the brush a little bit so that they, you know, not every petal is exactly the same. And then I'll pull some out to make it look a little different. And I usually pull this, pull it out on the side that I want softer and stuff here. So let's uh, take a little white and that yellow together and come back in. We were going to make one kind of downturned here. So Let's kind of pull out maybe a little bit. That'll help turn it down like that. Okay, and maybe I'll pull across like this, and these will make the turn the turned petals here up into the front side of it here, the turning petals there, like that. And we'll just put a little more color into that. And then we'll add one or two little pull downs here, like that's another one right there, kind of pulling out and down. And maybe a little more yellow into that. And we'll add like a little yellow one right here coming down there. Just an impression of that. And sometimes that's all I do is just little impressions of a color. Like there's another one right there. You know, and I can I can just take a real quick stroke of thick white right up here like that. And maybe that's the idea of a little turned one. Now let's take some of that thick white and that Hansa there. And let's come back and let's just state again right over these uh, these petals here. Now sometimes, you know, sometimes I paint these many times back and forth, state and pull in and out. And, you know, I show you that in many, many different videos. I'll pull in and out, lift off some of the color and pull the color down to create more movement and softness into a center. I use, I use tons, lots of different techniques. Here I'll pull a little yellow out just to harmonize these daisies here. I use all different kinds of methods here. The most important thing is, look at the consistency of my paint. It's really, really thick, and, and I'm painting with a lot of confidence. I bam, put that on and get out of there. You know, and, and that takes some practice to get in there and do that. Now, let's come in. Let's just take a little bit of green, and let's take a little bit of our, our violet color here. Uh, we can even add a little black or a little of our burnt... Uh, sienna there maybe a tiny bit of black blue is also a nice thing to add it just makes all these various greens okay and then we'll come in and we'll do a little negative painting in here with some real contrast darks here dark 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 green we'll do a little negative painting which i mean is i paint use the background to help me shape up some of the areas on these uh, little blossoms here and some areas i'll let that just Let's just let that fade out there. Just lose the edge. You don't need to be perfect on it. You have enough out here to say there's a flower. You don't need to have too much more stuff going on there inside that flower. Let's just put a little of that color. Let's put a little bit of that. Let's work that out right in here like this is going to be a little leaf shape. We'll soften that back and forth and then push this, this petal in and out a little bit like that. And that'll soften that petal right in there. Push those colors together. And I don't do it too many times. And then you see me kind of stutter a little bit. I don't want to do it too many times or else I'll make it all one color. And I just want to do it a little bit. Then we'll come back and restate just a touch of that on top. And that's what gives you all this beautiful interest coming back and forth into the painting. So if I want to get some more out here, I'll just come in like this. I'll lift some of that some of that paint off like this. This cre And notice it creates the movement. See the light movement that that's creating? Taking the dark in and out there like that, creating a little bit of that movement. 
Now come back. Let's let's pop that up a little bit more here with some white. Let's get some more of our thick white here and some Hansa and maybe just a touch of our yellow oxide. And let's just come back and state those petals again right here. One more time, vary the color a little bit, just a little out here. And that just makes those petals. We can use the chisel brush to make them look a little different. But you can see you can make all different kinds of looks here. And we can pull out like this to make a petal there that uh, comes out over the top of this one. That looks good too. Hey, there's a lot of different ways here. We can uh, paint these. We can push in and out a bit here to re, re uh, bring back up that dark that we had in there and in towards the center. Let's push in and out of this one a bit like this. And that brings that dark back out. Let's do this one here. And then we'll just come in and add a few more touches of dark. A little dark leafy green that we used here, the dark there. That keeps our contrast into the center of our little flowers here, like that. That keeps that contrast in the center. We can use this, um, let's use a little Hansa, excuse me, a little yellow oxide and a little green here. We can just add like little calyx ideas here, like those would be little calyx, or other ideas of other leaves, a little brighter, brighter green leaves there. Coming out maybe just a, even a little brighter yet since we have that nice bright yellow daisy there. Daisy type flower. Let's add a little Hansa to that green. And let's just put a little touch or so of this brighter green out there. A few little strokes of that out to create some of that bright color. Now we'll take some of our yellow oxide, tap that right into some of our light colors here. And we'll come around. Here, let's build a little bit of the yellow oxide and light. Just model it right on the corner of your brush like this and tap that down here. Lighten the pressure as you go out like that. Okay, so we'll use a little bit more of that. And I always kind of vary the color a little bit. Sometimes more yellow oxide, sometimes more yellow. Then I'll uh, pick up some Hansa yellow here. Let's pick up some white. Put that on the corner of the brush. Let's tap a little more highlight into there. A little more light into that. There like that. Just soft little fun little daisies here. They're great and they're casual and they're just a build up of color here. And it's a small little painting and you can do it quite quite fast. So there's there's that. Now you can add other little colors. Like let's come back in and take, take the corner of the brush here. And let's just pop in a little more green contrast right into the center of that daisy. Just take that green right on the corner of your brush. Paint out and tap into some of that center color. And that will put some of the green right back inside there. And that looks pretty nice. That's different. You could use red. You could, you know, you could high contrast since we had that burnt sienna into the background. You can add a little bit of that burnt sienna and that looks really nice too because you pick that up in the background now you see it inside of your daisies here so that this looks great and you can add a stroke or two or a color of that this is what artists do you know add some into the center there that creates a little more contrast with that push that in and out just create you can you know make all different types of centers if you go into that center too much just take a little color and back it back out again like that like I did there and but that burnt sienna is really nice stuff it just creates some more contrast and you decide how much you know these and these you know how much you're going to do and these are just real casual little fun flowers and so i just start to use the corner of my brush like this and add extra little touches of color here's just the burnt sienna and i'll pull just a little bit of that in and out you know adding a little more color and how much more contrast do you want to have into your painting, that burnt sienna and that pine green, um, you know, adding a little bit of violet to that is is beautiful. It's a violet and pine green is, is such a dark color, dark brown color, and it's a lovely color for contrast. And a lovely color for contrast here, since we have, 
you know, this frame that we're looking at here, adding that right into a, a frame there like that. And you see, matter of fact, you might just want to leave that right there for a second as we um, add some extra little colors and tones and contrast here into the painting. Maybe you want to see some of that. Pull some of that out and let's add a little strokes of lighter green out there. And I'm just, so you can see every time I touch this dark, I'm creating more contrast here. Maybe I just want to push that in and out on one side here and actually physically darken down one side of this little daisy a little more than the others there and soften it down and let that side kind of disappear. See how you can create these different looks. And Maybe I want to just take some in and out of this little flower here on this side. Maybe we'll bring up just a touch, but you let most of that flower kind of disappear on that side. And I'm just using really thick paint here now. You can see that real thick paint. And just come back and add a few little uh, extra strokes. There's, you know, the daisies, the look of the daisies here depend on the brush you use, the type of stroke you use, and everything. There's, a, you know, I show in all the videos that we paint, I show you thousands of ways to paint daisies. You know, they're one of the first flowers that I learned how to paint. And one of the first flowers I like to teach people how to paint because they teach you how to move color. And um, they are uh, wonderful flowers that you can paint all different kinds of ways. That's the beauty of them here. So we can just put a little bit of just little touches like this, little bits of movement like that. So little touches. Once I create this softness, like I can create a softness here in and out like this. Okay, so I have that lost edge. Then I could take just a corner of my brush like this and just add little bits of movement there and create a whole nother little look to my daisy there. So let's do that over here on this side here as well. So you can see it just take a little tiny bit of that thick paint onto the corner and just kind of draw out just a bit like that. And you'll create a different, a whole different feeling to those little daisies like that. All kinds of ways, just little tips and little edges on them. Give makes them feel more transparent. Just take the edges off like that, pick up that little color under the edge, and just touch touch it and lift off and create little transparent edges and movements there. And it creates all different kinds of like here's another little daisy back here. Isn't that kind of pretty? Maybe a, a, a touch of that movement into the center so it's not just all dark. You get some other movements of some other colors in there. Maybe some movements, lights, colors coming down. And uh, so I've got enough, I think, dark that it fits this frame. So we'll look at that. See, it's just kind of fitting that whole frame there really nice and I like the little violet now this is the thing so I have this beautiful little violet but I haven't incorporated that violet into my painting and I'm a big advocate for that so I'll just come back and add just a little stroke or two right in there sometimes if I hit over the highlight a little bit I'll just go back in and restate the highlight but I want to I want to put some let's put it a little brighter a little lighter little white right back into that violet here and you see it's been 30 minutes and see how wet and nice this is still there so it's it's beautiful colors once you learn how to use these heritage like this you can paint with them just like an oil you know they're they're wonderful and there's no smell and no clean it was non-toxic and environmentally safe and it's just they're wonderful so I'll add just a few little touches of that through the painting here just create this soft little uh, painting of flowers. I think that's enough. I just I kind of like that fracturing colors. It's just got a it's got a little different look to it, a little nice look to it, okay? Hope you enjoyed it. I had a great time painting with you. This is using the colors really really thick and uh, not playing with it. That's the beauty of these quick compositions. I do a lot of quick compositions. I have several quick composition books and then I have a book on which I call the primer of this type of techniques which it's a book just built all around techniques for quick compositions of landscapes and flowers and scrolls. And so you should look at that. You can find it all on jansenartstore.com. 
and uh, all the information is there for you. They're kind of fun flowers to paint like this, and I paint a lot of roses and stuff. And as always, if you have any kinds of questions or anything like that, you can always write to us right at uh, right off of our websites there, this comment section. You can just contact us there or contact us at jansenartstudioal.com, and I'll try to answer your questions for you. Sometimes it takes me a while, but I'll get to you, okay? And look us up on all of our social networking. We're out there. All right, thanks a lot, and I'll see you on some of the other videos where we practice and paint some real quick compositions. Just paint them real fast and just get in there and get practicing. Okay, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.